Okay, so this is our last class, uh, and I hope you pass this class, and I don't have to see you again for dynamics. Uh, well, I'm going to teach dynamics in fall. Also, I'm going to teach dynamics in summer. So if you don't pass this class, I might see you, but I don't want you to see you. I want you to see you in a different class, probably in mechatronics or something else. Uh, as I said, if you score 65 and more, irrespective of what you did in the course, you, you're guaranteed a C minus. So if you're if done poorly in the, in, in the course so far, you still have a chance to pass the final. In fact, I would uh, highly encourage you to try your best because uh, who knows, the exam might be easy. You might lose all the exams. I don't know. We have not set the exams. We've decided what sort of questions we'll, we'll ask, but uh, unless I see the questions, I cannot tell. But you can expect it to be hard. So, are we doing an ICQ? No, I think uh, It's going to be, we're trying to see that, uh, ensure that about 50 to 60 percent of the questions are roughly uh, things you have seen before homeworks, practice uh, questions, uh, what else? Term practice questions and uh, term exams and homework. So, three things. So, we're trying to ensure that you can score. Uh, 50 or more if you do just that. And of course, there would be one question which is going to be hard because you want to differentiate people who have an A from uh, people who don't get an A, right? We, uh, we ideally want the people who get, who get A's to earn those grades. So it's going to be at least one question will be hard. So in general, be prepared for a hard exam. If I tell anything other than that, then people take it too easy and then we have a very low average. Yes. Uh, there are six questions, 110 points, which includes 10 bonus points. So here's where you can actually get a little bit more points uh, because there are bonus points. Uh, the advantage of, well, the, the, the pros of six questions, 110 points, is that you have two hours, 30 minutes <coughs> to solve six questions in the term exams. You only had one hour, 15 minutes to solve six questions. So you're going to get twice the time to solve the same number of questions, right? So I, I believe, I, I would expect that you would not be on a time crunch for the final exam. Now, the hard part about the final exam is it's comprehensive, which means that uh, unlike the term exams, you knew that the questions would be from a particular chapter. In this case, you have to figure that out first then apply the formula and then go. So that's why we've given you more time. Okay, So it's not going to be hard 
this I believe this not going to be a time crunch, but you got to be better prepared for this one than previous exams because everything uh, would be covered. Any any other questions other than what's in the exam? Um, do, the, do, the, do the questions go through chapters? Like, uh, is this like one question going to involve multiple chapters? Multiple so there are six questions and there are eight chapters, so clearly we cannot ask question from each chapter. I think that our plan is to have four, uh, four or five questions from each of the chapters, and then one one question will be cross cut. One or two questions will be cross cutting, so it might involve multiple uh, concepts. Uh, that's the plan, and we always try to see that there are sub parts to it. So it's not like uh, it's not binary. It's not like zeros and ones. If you solve partially and you get sub part credit. Any other questions about the exam? Okay, so to help you, what we have, what we'll do is, uh, last time when we taught this course, in, I taught this course in uh, uh, fall, uh, fall 2017. Uh, our exam was exactly this format: six questions, 110 points. So we're going to post that exam, and highly, I, I urge you to give that exam in exam condition. So lock two and a half hours for yourself. So first, prepare for the exam like you would for the finals. And then uh, give yourself two hours, 30 minutes. Attempt the questions for the, the, that particular exam in examination conditions, OK? You're not allowed to see the uh, your notes. You're not allowed to see either computer. You only allow a calculator, which you get in the exam, and of course, the formula sheet. And try to solve those six questions. And we'll also post the solutions to that. So simulate an actual exam using the practice exam from last semester, which we'll post. And I think that might help you to do better in the exam. So please, please try to do that. Do not attempt that exam, that practice exam, half-heartedly or uh, not in exam conditions. Okay. So we will, in addition, we'll also post Pearson questions. So these are just to give you extra practice. Uh, but this exam will simulate an actual exam because six questions and then ten points from fall 2017. Uh, anything else? Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. The, the formula sheet is it going to be the one that's on Blackboard now, or because it's slightly different? It's the same one. Uh, it's the same formula sheet. It's probably the first page on the book. If you open the book, it's on the left side. That's the page. But it's also posted. If you open the home page of this course on Blackboard, there's a formula sheet. We'll essentially give you that one. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, we the exam is on May 8th, and the grades are due on Friday, May 11th. So we have, we have a time crunch. Uh, normally, we try to do what I try to do is I always have this office hours after the grades are posted, so you can come and ask me why you got the points you got, and you know say if there was something wrong. I'll try my best to do it this time because there's a such a short time between the actual uh, the final and the uh, grades due that that may not be possible. I'll try my best. Okay. So you can expect that I'll have office hours maybe on May 11th, Friday. Grades are due at 2 p.m., so I could have office hours on May 11th in the morning, or I could have it the previous day on May 10th. That depends on how we finish grading. Six questions, 190 exams is a lot of grading. OK, any other questions about the exam? OK, uh, here's what I think you want to do to maximize your score. Uh, when you're solving the questions, Draw a free body diagram. Even if you're not asked to draw one, try to draw a free body diagram. Okay? And this 20 to 30 plus is only if uh, it demands a free body diagram, but doesn't hurt you to draw a free body diagram. Now, you cannot draw a free body diagram has no value if the problem is a pure kinematics problem where you do not need to use F equals MA. Uh, Identify and write the dynamic concepts to you. So we are trying to see if you are able to judge if this question, uh, given a question, what concepts will apply. So before you even start writing um, uh, half mv square plus, just write principle of con uh, conservation of energy or principle of uh, work done. And then set up the formula t1 plus v1 equals t2 plus v2. And then go about solving the problem. Okay, That itself gives you some points. Uh, then write down the relevant equation using meaningful variables. So uh, there are usually there's a lot of credit given to writing, for example, if there's a moment, 
R cross mg, if you write F times 3 and you put the right sign, positive, negative, that itself carries a lot of value or weightage for the, your credit. So uh, it's important to put the right magnitude as well as sign. Just don't uh, write something randomly. So for exam example, mg cosine theta, if you identify that the, the force resolved in that direction is cosine theta, that has credit over just writing mg. In fact, you, if you just write mg, we, we, we sort of understand that you've not understood how to resolve forces, you'll not get get points. And then the thing which you shouldn't worry too much is the final answer. It really creates very little credit. Uh, I usually give two points. If you get everything right, you get two points for the final answer. If you got, if you try to get the answer but it's not right, I give you one point. So you, I, I cut one point. So it's really very minimal. So don't stress too much on the final answer. But these three steps are important. Okay. Uh, so what I think is draw correct free body diagrams, write correct equations, and that will give you maximum uh, credit in the exam. Okay. Other things are uh, be selective. Even though you have more time, try to choose problems where which you have gained enough practice so that you maximize your chance of scoring full points. Uh, solve easy questions first. Okay, uh, you don't have to start from question one, go through all the way to six. Uh, read the whole question paper. There's ample time. Find the problems which are easy. Solve them. You assure yourself of. Uh, the questions are going to be either 20 points or 15 points. You've got to assure yourself of 20 points. Remember, you've got to get 65 to pass this class, and then you can score high. So getting 65 is about solving three questions right, right? 20, 20, and 15. That will give you uh, 60. Is that 65? No, it's 55. So uh, I think it's four and a half. I think it's four and a half. 20, 20, three and a half. If you, if you attempt three questions worth so 20 points, you scored 60, and then you need to get uh, the rest of the three questions, you need to get probably five points. So if you, if you think of it in that perspective, what you need to do to pass the class is just three and a half questions, get it fully right. But there's a sea of uh, uh, questions which are in the term exams, homework, so don't get bogged by that. I would say be very strategic about how you prepare for the final exam. So be strategic in your preparation uh, that is solve more problems on important concepts. For example, uh, I would say 16 point, uh, what is the part on relative acceleration and relative velocity. Is it 16.5 and 3? Is that right? I'm not sure about this, but let me write this here. Relative velocity, relative it's, it's invariable that we'll ask you a question on that because this is one of the this is very useful when you do senior design and so on. So we will test you on something like this. Uh, but then you can go through our exams, the term exams, and you can more or less guess what are the what are the things which uh, would have a higher chance. And I would say stress on those. Try to study those first, perfect those before you start learning about less important things. Like for example, a projectile is important, but it's not terribly important, right? Uh, uh, variable acceleration and those graphs is important, but not too important. So uh, be strategic about how you prepare for the exam. Okay, not every concept will be represented in the exam, as I said, because there are eight chap eight chapters and only six uh, six um, questions. Okay, anything else? Okay, so remember, it's a lot about strategy. It's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. So given the, the amount of time you have, which is about eight days from now, be very strategic about your preparation. So my goal today is to uh, continue where we left off yes, on, on uh, Wednesday and solve more problems using the same 
formula, the recipe which I gave you, I gave you a handout, right? And we'll basically go through that and solve a bunch of problems. Okay, so let's start. The, the 15 kg block A starts at rest, starts from rest at A, and lifted friction free with a force F equals 500 Newtons. A spring with a stiffness of 10 Newton meters is attached to block A. The spring is unstretched when the, when the system is at the shown rest position. Assume the value of G equals 10 meters per second square. Uh, draw the free body diagram and determine the velocity of block A when they travel a distance of one meter. Okay, so when the force applied, the block moves up. You're going to find what's the what is the velocity when the block is here. Uh, this was one of the exams in um, spring 2017, not the final, but one of the term exams. Okay, so if you go through that. A handout I gave those five points. Uh, first thing is I, I go by elimination, right? Uh, first I ask myself, is this a kinematics problem? It is not a kinematics problem because there's a force given. So it's not chapter 12 and 16. We go to the next, uh, is it a problem involving, uh, uh, are you asked velocity as a function of displacement? You are asked velocity as a function of displacement. Velocity of the block A when it has traveled a distance of one meters, right? So this is either chapter of 14 or 18, but in this case it's 14 because there is no rigid body here. It's only particle. A is a particle, not a rigid body. And we got to use, oh, well, there's two options. Conservation of energy, principle of work done. What will you use here? Principle of work done. Principle of work and energy. And the only reason why you want to do it is because there's a force F, which is a rather conservative force. Okay, so let's start with the free body diagram. F, uh, there is, we draw this slightly differently. Mg, uh, what about the spring force? Would it be acting downwards or upwards? So the spring is unstretched. Okay? When you pull the spring, it will tend to go back to its equilibrium position. So it's going to be downwards. This is unstretched. So it's going to be downwards. It's going to be... Uh, Okay, we got to assume some dis distance here because in order to find the spring force, so let's assume this to be y. Okay, so we're measuring the motion of A from a datum line which is here. So this is the unstretched length, which is y equals zero. So this is going to be k times y minus 0, where y indicates the displacement of the block up. So it is the stretched length, which is y, minus the unstretched length, which is 0. Okay, is there anything else? Okay, so that's the free body diagram. Let's move on to principle of work. And energy which states that T1 plus U12 equals T2. Okay, initial kinetic energy is zero. Starts from rest. Okay, it's zero. T2 is half times the mass times velocity squared, and the velocity there is an unknown. Okay, and then U12. is the work done due to all the forces acting on the system. So there are three forces. So we're going to find the work done due to those three forces. 
So mg, the work done by mg is mg times y is that positive or negative? negative? Negative, right? It's negative because mg is downwards and the motion is upwards, so force times displacement, since the, they are opposite direction, will be negative. Um, the next thing is the spring work, so half k times y minus 0 square. Is that positive or negative? negative. Spring work is always negative. Uh, potential energy is always positive. Okay, and the final one is work done due to the force F. Okay, uh, the force F acts at an angle. Okay, let's call that angle theta. So the definition is uh, F dot. So either I do f dot ds, right? That's the definition of work done. Or what I can do is I can write f cosine theta. F cosine theta is the force in the vertical direction. That's the force which does work. That's the component which does work. The f sine theta, which acts in the horizontal direction, does not do work because the particle is only moving in the vertical direction. So the work done is force times displacement. The force in the x direction doesn't do work because displacement is zero. So f cosine theta times y or dy is the work done. So f cosine theta is upwards, so it's positive. dy is positive because it's upwards, so the sine is positive. Okay, so this is the work done. Uh, y goes from zero all the way to one. Or rather, let me just put it zero to y. And I'll put y equals 1 later on. Okay, so f is a constant, so I can factor it out, but cosine theta, is that a constant? Does the angle remain constant? So what happens when this moves up? The angle is going to become, it's, a, it's probably going to increase. If it increase. Eventually, that angle, when it reaches here, that theta is going to be 90 degrees, right? So the angle changes with time. So this integral is going to be, uh, you're going to write an expression for cosine theta in terms of y and then integrate it. So I'm going to draw a triangle this is y so this distance doesn't change so I'll write it as 1 meter So initially the mass is here, so this is not right. So initially the mass is here, assume that after some time it, it has moved a distance y up, which means that this distance is 1 minus y because this complete distance is 1. So this is the initial position, this is the intermediate position that it starts over here, moves the distance y up. And I want to I would write cosine theta in a generic position because I want to be able to integrate that. So this distance is one, exactly the same one there. This is one that doesn't change, but this is going to be uh, one minus y. So now I can write cosine theta because this is a right angle triangle. And cosine theta is going to be adjacent side, which is one minus y, divided by the hypotenuse, which is uh, one minus y squared plus one squared. Okay, so I got to put this in here and integrate. So uh, f is constant, I can pull it out, 1 minus y dy divided by 1 minus y squared plus 1. So, so do you guys remember how to solve an integral? Go take 1 minus y uh, squared is a, you would take 1 minus y, the whole square, equals some variable, let's call it um, uh, x. So 
2 1 minus y dy is dx so then we can write this as f times so when y is 0 x is 1 when y is 1 x is 0 1 minus y dy is going to be dx divided by 2 times this thing is going to be uh, x square plus 1 so f divided by 2 x equals 1 to x equals 0 dx divided by x square plus 1 sorry it's x plus 1 square root of x plus 1 okay this is This comes out to be x plus 1 divided by half 0 and 1. So once we get this, we'll put this in this equation. And then from the principle of work energy, Okay, I'm going to, well, this comes out to be 207. This comes out to be minus 150. This comes out to be minus 5. So it's 0 plus... Two hundred and seven minus one fifty minus five equals half times mass, which is fifteen v two square. You solve for v two, you get two point six three meters per second. Okay, we'll move to the next one. The five pound cylinder is falling from. Oh, by the way, any questions on the previous question? No. Was that clear? Any questions on that? The five pound cylinder is, is falling from A with a speed of 10 feet per second onto the platform. Determine the maximum displacement of the platform caused by the collision. The spring has an unstretched length of 1.75 and is originally kept in a compression by the one feet long uh, cables attached to the platform. Neglect the mass of the platform and spring and any energy lost during the collision. So a key thing about the spring is that it is compressed. So if you, if you unscrew these things, you remove the platform, the spring will unstretch to It will be, it will unstretch to this length 1.75. Okay, that's its free length, but you compress it to so it's one feet. So this block falls on the platform. It compresses the platform. You're going to find the maximum displacement. The spring gets compressed. Okay, so it's easiest to measure y from here. So let's measure y from the ground up. So we got to find how much the spring gets compressed. I'm going to draw it here. This is our y, and we're trying to find what this y is. Okay, in other words, the spring will get compressed by 1 minus y. Spring in final compressed state. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, let's go through the handout I gave you. Uh, is it a kinematics problem? It's not a kinematics problem because clearly there's gravity, uh, there's a collision involved. Uh, is it, uh, what is it, conservation of energy principle of displacement, principle of work energy problem? You're asked to find compression, the maximum displacement of the platform caused by the collision. Okay. Uh, it doesn't explicitly say velocity is a function of displacement, but actually it's hidden right there. Uh, you got to find the displacement when the velocity is zero. It doesn't say that explicitly there, but that's what that wording means, right? Find the displacement when the velocity is zero. In other words, that's when the spring is going to be fully compressed. So even though it doesn't say it, it's actually in here. Find S when V is zero, or it's a chapter, what's that? Uh, again, chapter 14 problem. Well, 34, yeah, 14. It's not a rigid body problem, so it's a particle problem. So we can use principle of conservation of energy. So I'm going to write conservation of energy. T1 plus P1 equals T2 plus V2. Okay, my uh, the one is this instance, two is this instance. Okay, so the potential energy. So what's the pot so well kinetic energy is zero. Oh sorry, its kinetic energy is half m v a square. What is the potential energy? Uh, well, what's the datum, right? Now you have two options. You can choose this to be the datum, which is this to be the this 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 is the datum when uh, if you assume that you would start off from the maximum compression, this could be the datum. Still up to you. So the advantage of choosing this datum is that. Eventually, if you write V2, you'll have zero potential energy. If you write V data over here, then V2 will not be equal to zero. So I'll choose this data only because it will give me V2 due to potential energy zero. So let's choose this to be the datum. So the potential energy is m g times the distance from this position to the datum. So what's that distance? Uh, hold on. Um, let me do something different, slightly different. Let me just choose this to be y. So it's much easier. So it would have been 4 minus y. That's complicated. So I'm going to write this as y. It's much easier this way. So it's 3 plus y. Is it positive or negative? What's the sign? Positive because um, above the datum is positive, below the datum is negative. Equals uh, t2. What's the kinetic energy over here? Zero. Uh, wait, before that, let me backtrack. Uh, is that the only potential energy? Maybe there's a spring involved. Is the potential energy due to the spring zero in at the instance one? It's not, right? Because the spring is, com is compressed. So if the spring was uncompressed, so unstretched, then yes, it's zero. So I'm missing a term here. I'm missing a term in the potential. So it's going to be half k times the the stretch in this position. So the stretch is like this, so 0.75 squared. Or if you want to be really thorough about it, it is the unstretched length, which is 1, minus the stretched length, sorry, stretched length 1, minus the unstretched length 1.75 squared equals, okay, now we can write T2, which is zero. Uh, what is the potential energy due to the, due to gravity at two? What's V2 due to the 
due to gravity. It's zero. So this is the advantage of choosing the datum here. You, you got zero. If you had used the, this to be the datum, then, then it's not going to be zero. So zero. And what's the potential energy to the spring when it's stretched? It's half k times the stretched length. So the length of the spring is going to be 1 minus y, right? The spring is going to be that tall. That's going to be the length of the spring. So that length is going to be 1 minus y. So this distance is 1 minus y. So 1 minus y is the stretched length minus the unstretched length. The unstretched length is always 1.75. So 1.75 squared. OK, so uh, what are the unknowns? Well, k is known. Y is the unknown. VA is known. Yeah, so this is going to be a single equation in a single unknown y. So if you solve for this, if you if you uh, sub in the values and simplify this, you'd get 200 y square minus 295 y minus 22.76 equals 0. So this gives you two solutions. Only one of the solutions is positive, and that's the one you've got to accept. It's 0 0.0735 feet. Okay. Any questions on this? Yeah, I'm going to jump from, I'm going to do this question later on if I have the time. Uh, let me jump to this one. Okay, due to slipping, points A and B on the rim of the disk have velocities shown. So velocity of B is this, velocity of A is this. Uh, a is, so note that A is not at rest. It's moving, which means that the disk is slipping. Determine the velocities of the center of center point C and point D. So we got to find velocity of C and velocity of D. Okay. So we go back to the the, the sheet I gave you. This is a kinematics problem. Is it or is it not? So you're not given the mass, you're not given gravity, you're not given inertia, so you do not need this. This is a kinematics problem. Okay, so in order to find velocity of C, uh, we need to use the relative velocity formula. Okay. Velocity of B is velocity of A plus omega cross R B with respect to A. Okay. Velocity of B, so if you assume X and Y as shown, velocity of B is minus 10 because it's to the left in the X direction. So I'm going to write minus 10 I, I is a unit vector in the X direction, equals velocity of A, which is 5. It's acting to the right, so it's positive A, positive I plus omega, so let me assume omega is uh, counterclockwise, so it's omega times k, right, crossed with the vector from a to b, vector from a to b. Okay, that vector is pointing in the j direction, the length of the vector is the diameter of the, of the cylinder, which is 0.8 times 2, so 1.6 j. Okay, so let me simplify that. 
minus 10 i equals 5 i i j k when you do k cross j you have to go clockwise so it's going to be negative i so k j k times cross j will give you i with a negative sign because it's clockwise that's going to be 1.6 omega for the magnitude okay so that is an equation in i so you can solve for omega it gives it gives us omega equals 9.375 radians per second okay given omega now we can start asking how to solve for velocity of c so velocity of c is velocity of uh, you could choose either point a or b so velocity of a plus omega r c with respect to a okay if you chose instead of a it's perfectly fine if you chose b we have to replace this with c with respect to b so if you write that formula in that fashion you'll get the same answer so uh, it doesn't matter as long as you have the right values for b a and r b with respect to a so velocity of a is 5 to the right omega is 9.375 k because we found omega crossed with the vector from a to c so that's going to be the radius which is 0.8 uh, times unit vector in the j direction so if you simplify this you should get 5i uh, if you multiply these two you get 7.5 and again k cross j k cross j is going to be minus i so velocity of c is negative 2.5 i okay that is velocity of c is this way okay velocity of d is uh, now you can write velocity of d as velocity of c plus omega cross r c with respect to a you could also write velocity of d is velocity of a plus omega r d with respect to a or velocity of d is velocity of b and so on. so I have three options of three ways of writing no matter how you write you'll get the same answer so i'm just going to write velocity of a because i already have it over here it's much easier to do it that way r d with respect to a so velocity of a is again 5i omega is 9.375 k and i need to find a unit vector from a to d so a to d or oh, sorry the uh, the vector from a to d This is A, this is D, I need to find this vector, this is point 0.8, uh, that's 45, so if I can find this angle, and if I know the length, then I can find, this is point 0.8, point 0.8, so this length, how can you find this length? This angle is 135 degrees. So length of AD is going to be, you can use the cosine formula, 0 0.8 square plus 0 0.8 square minus 2 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 cosine of 135 degrees AD. So this angle, so if this is 135, then the sum of all the angles is 180, right? But this angle is the same as this angle because this is, these two lengths are equal. So it's a, oh, wait, but I still have a triangle. So those two angles are 45 divided by 2, right? Because sum of the angles, these, some of these two angles is 45 because if you add 45 to 135, you get 180. 
So this should be 22.5. And this should be 90 minus 22.5. So there you have, uh, I, I have to compute this. I don't know this. You have to write LAD cosine, for, uh, what is this, 90 minus 22.5? Is it 78.5? 78 77.5? Yeah, 77.5. So, if we cosine 77.5 degrees, 67, cosine 67.5, So 67.5i plus sine 67.5 degrees along j. Length AD will come from here. Whatever you compute, oh, it somehow don't have it here. Anyway, so what I got from this expression is 5i plus So I got velocity of d is 5i plus 9.375 k crossed with 0.57i plus 1.37j, which if you simplify, you should get minus 7.8i plus 5.3j. Okay, so this is one way to solve it. Can you think of another way to solve this without using vectors? How will you solve this without using vectors? Okay, you can use you can use ICs. In fact, I recommend that you try using ICs. Solve the same, solve the problem and see if you get the same answer. Okay, I have two minutes, so I'm just going to uh, start off with this, but not quite be able to solve it. The double pulley consists of two wheels which are attached to one another and turn at the same rate. Okay, those are the two wheels here. Let's see. The pulley has a mass of 15 kilograms and a radius of gyration of 110 millimeters. If the block A has a mass of 40 kgs and container B has a mass of 85 kgs, including its contents. Determine the speed of the container when T is 3 seconds after it has starts to rest. So speed when it moves, uh, speed after 3 seconds. So speed is a function of time. So this is a problem on uh, impulse and momentum or work and energy. Uh, because there is a rigid body, it is a problem involving uh, uh, chap is the last chapter, chapter 19. Right? So chapter 19, uh, impulse and momentum. So I will set up the equation, the angular momentum about point C. So what I will do is draw the free body diagram of the, of the complete system, not the individual components. Uh, take the angular momentum about point C and then solve it. You see that if you, you it just writing that equation and, and you get the answer to the problem. So I'll complete this and post it. Uh, I would have office hours next week uh, and also in the week of the exams. Probably, I'll probably, I'm thinking of having one hour on next week, end of the next week, so maybe Friday, and then have one hour on Monday and one hour on Tuesday, which is the day of the exam. So I'll see you 